Hi, uh, back to uh, back to it again. Uh, so last night we had a, a, a very uh, a very successful, it was a great event uh, with the uh, the live shoot and live edit. Uh, that I had a few issues, uh, etc. And uh, and we set the challenge actually to uh, to, to I shared out the uh, the link uh, to the photographs that I shared with Dell. Uh, so let's. Um, Let's do a, a a live a live not a live edit. But let's do a, an edit each and and see who comes up with uh, with what, um, and uh, and take it from there. And let's share each other's edits. So this is mine. I'm going to do this very quickly. I'm going to use uh, maybe one or two of the techniques that Dell um, Dell uh, talked about. And uh, but I'm just going to do it uh, as I would do it and talk you through very quickly. So I'm going to share my screen here up to Photoshop, which is where I'm going to uh, do all of this. Uh, so opening up the image that we are going to be working on, which was this one coming up now. Might take a while to open up because it's a TIFF file, a raw file opening up in camera raw at the moment. Um, and here we go. It comes onto your screen. Hopefully any second now. There we go. Right. So this is the image that we were working on. Um, having had a look through, yeah, we've gone for the, uh, the the Adobe Portrait uh, profile here. We've got the Adobe Color, Adobe Landscape. I did not like at all. We're going for the Adobe Portrait. I think was the best uh, the best one there. Looking down, I've removed a few of the highlights and I actually brought the shadows down a touch as well, just because I like it, I, I, just because I liked it. Uh, so that is my starting point. Uh, looking at the optics, I've decided on this particular case, use the profile, but I'm removing the distortion. I think adding the distortion correction in there it's kind of, I don't know if it's bowed a little bit there, so I'm just removing the distortion, but keeping the rest of it there. So that's with the profile correction, uh, lens correction off, and that's with it on. It just uh, it does the vin removes the vignette and, and bits, or not removes it, but uh, it corrects it a little bit there. So I'm gonna open up from here uh, into Photoshop itself, and we're gonna uh, do some, uh, some, some bits that, uh, that Dell had suggested that we do. Um, so uh, initially uh, duplicate the layer there, because I think that's, if I get it, that's what Dell was talking about. Now using the patch correction tool, I believe, patch correction tool and turning off the content aware uh, was what I understand from Dell. Now looking at the background here, let's just try and do some of this that he was talking about doing uh, on the background, just to remove these wrinkles, which I think is quite nice there. Uh, it's good to do, actually good to get rid of the wrinkles and we'll be getting rid of more wrinkles in a bit. I'm not overly worried about this because I'm going to be doing something different to the background anyway in my edit. Uh, so I'm just going to just move a bit of this over these wrinkles here. Let's that one, take it to there. This is really good, really quick. Uh, I'm liking this technique of doing this. Uh, this is excellent. This is not something I've done to the background before. So thanks for the tutorial last night, uh, Del. It's uh, it's fantastic. Really, really good. Yeah, I would have been using all sorts of clones and uh, and everything otherwise. Uh, so there we go. Using the patch tool, just getting rid of some of those nasty lines and nasty shapes and stuff there. Okay. Right, from here, I am actually, Dell. I'm sorry, but I am going to start using, uh, rather than your, uh, your healing brush tool, I'm, I'm gonna use frequency separation. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. 
Right. Uh, I now I I know we're talking about presets and everything, uh, and how each image needs to be done uh, individually. So I'm going to copy the background here. I'm going to apply the blur. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, which is the Gaussian blur. Now that's got mine so way up at the moment, which is nowhere near what we need. So I'm just going to take mine to about maybe slightly too much. I'm going to take mine to about there, three point one ish on this particular case, just so that. Uh, that's that's all done. Now I'm going to uh, copy that again. Uh, do, 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 do. Up here now on this particular one, we uh, go to the apply image. So image, uh, do, do, do. apply image. In this case, we are looking at the layer of that one. There is it. Uh, do you know I've forgotten how to do this? <laughs> Isn't this dreadful? Do you know what? I'm, I'm going to go back to this. Uh, I'm going to delete that. In this case, I am going to use my uh, my preset. And there it is. It's all done for you. Um, the background blur is probably way too high on this particular setting. But there we go. So it's all done. The the uh, the, the the bits and pieces I that I've, I've set up before my presets. Um, so coming in to the skin uh, on the background high layer, as they call it, I'm going to remove that down here. And I am going to just use the frequency separation. Oh, if my tool will allow me to, this is the one annoying thing that I find with Photoshop at the moment. My pen tool just doesn't like uh, working a lot of the time. So I'm just going to go around and remove some of these blemishes here from the skin, picking up texture that is very, very close to, it's actually, yeah, as Del was saying, there's not a lot to get rid of in this particular case, but what it does allow me to do is uh, work with the, the color uh, underneath, I, I feel this is the way I see it. I'm going, to just, I'm going to just make sure we go nice and smoothly over these bits and pieces here. Just remove those lines, just remove some of the texture in the highlight here. Just not all of it. The texture is good somewhere along the lines. And now I'm going to move back to my mixing brush uh, down here on the mid layer, which is working on the colors. And I'm going to take that over the highlight areas there. I'm going to come down here like that. And I'm going to take that up over. You know, there's a little bit, as Del was saying, of yellow makeup coming through here. Uh, yeah, that's lovely. There we go. That is pretty well about as much as I'm going to do on that. Del was talking about leaving the scarring because it's personal, which is uh, which is also very good. Uh, a little bit more on that. I'm going to take out just those lines, just a little bit of line here. There we go. A little bit on the side. Right bit of texture if I can. Skin just under the bits here. There. is just going around everywhere that I want to go with this initially. Uh, take this up. Uh, lovely, okay. Uh, moving back to the wet brush here. 
Right. Uh, okay. There we go. Now on top of this, so the eyes, I'm going to brighten the eyes up a little bit. And for this, uh, you can use um, the 50% the gray layer and paint it on, which uh, I might do actually, I'm going to do that. So I'm going to create a new layer here. I'm going to fill that with an overlay and 50% uh, fill uh, neutral color. Uh, so I'm going to Paste that here. Let's take that layer one right up to the top here. Using a normal brush, uh, reduce the opacity way down, maybe to about, in this case, about 10%. Uh, normal brush, brushing on white here to remove the, uh, let's reduce, sorry, the size of the brush. Taking the, the whites, now I'm using, uh, 0% hardness edge on here. It's about uh, that. And I'm just going to paint that over the eye, the whole eye initially as well. Just pick up some of the, the blue in the eye. I'm going to take that over here and just on the underneath because it's nice to have a bit of shade coming through the top of the, the eye. And there we go. So there is the difference. You've got the eyes changing very slightly it's not gonna i'm not gonna make them perfectly white because i think that's just over the top there we go moving back as we go down our model we are looking at just so we, we, we're trying to do a yeah proper high-end uh kind of model retouch my attempt at it here obviously people are going to be looking at this going oh god this is awful um because they're obviously much better and i've just picked this up from videos and tried my own thing uh and that's what is happening over here i've got some hairs coming through i'm just going to get rid of the ones down the side here uh and i'm going to using the fs just a little bit better again not oh dear that's awful I see the highlight coming in there right okay so that is that bit and that's going down here not, again not going to be too worried because i'm going to be altering background so i'm kind of continuing down the model just removing blemishes here i'm actually gonna i know this is you know birthmarks skin textures etc but i'm just gonna be doing just removing them uh just to produce what i see as the result that i would want from this particular sort of shoot here right going down the model uh right oh What's she doing? She's got a hairband on. Oh, that's irritating. Um, sort that out later. Okay. Uh, okay. Nothing particularly needs uh, retouching, etc. Down here. So coming out to the overall aspect the overall uh, image we can see there are changes in skin tones down the arm as Del was talking about um there are i mean the the she, she's wearing sheer tights which have produced a completely different skin tone here and that to me is pretty obvious so i am going to work with changing that uh producing this is, is the way i have i've just kind of uh, looked at layer adjustments i am going to in this particular case just select that there i think the legs are worse than the hands so i'm going to remove the hands from the selection i'm going to just pick up just the bits here select i'm going to mask adjust that mask here so that there's no massive hard edges to them it kind of feathers the edges in there uh, which i don't think is too much of a problem and from there i am going to 
go to my adjustment layers. Now I've got adjustment layers here. What I will probably do in this particular case is go to the hue and saturation. Uh, hue and saturation, I'm just going to add. Uh, okay, I'm going to move this layer up so that we can actually see it on top of the others. So hue and saturation, you can see that changing uh, there as we go with massive sliders. So changing it up, I'm going to just add yellow to just go oh, this way a little bit there. Now that's kind of getting there, going too far. I'll start going to green, uh, which we don't want in this particular case. What I think it's also lacking it down here is a bit of saturation. So I'm going to add saturation in to the colour there. There we go. And that is quite nice. Still a little bit uh, bluing here. I'm going to just go back to the uh, background copy colour layer here where we use the brush, uh, the mixer brush. And I'm going to just pull, if I can zoom in here, I'm going to just, I'm going to manually just brush that over down the leg a little bit. Uh, just using some of the colour here just to go. Oh, uh, there we are. There. Okay. Right. Uh, again, skin tones up the top here. I don't think that's massively well done down here. So what I'm going to do now, uh, we're talking about um, the gradient mapping on Dells as well. What I've got over here is the uh, bloody so is it going there? Filter, do, 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 NBP. Um, this is something uh, Barry put me onto actually. These uh, color maps. Uh, absolutely fantastic uh, stuff here because you can you can select areas and analyze areas etc uh, so in this particular case I'm going to just take the color up here which is the good skin tone that I'm after I'm going to remove the eyes or lips because I don't want necessarily those colors being analyzed in there it's literally the skin tones here that I'm after uh, analyzing so in the color map there. I'm going to click on the analyze. And a couple of seconds later, it's analyzed. That is giving me uh, a color gradient range here. So coming out of that, uh, I'm going to come right back down now to the leg again. And in this particular case, just use that. mask again here and on top of that I am then going to apply the color grading and you'll see that's uh, that's massive uh, I can just remove the fill or opacity of that to a level that I'm happy with now I think the leg now is probably somewhere in the region of right uh, and all looking nice. So from there again, I'm going to use the same color gradient and I'm going to use, select different areas here. And again, just give it a quick mask off to make it feather it in. Uh, which just gives you that less hard edge, which makes it less obvious what you're doing uh but it selects it kind of follows the, the the kind of color area you're looking for then so there's the uh there is the selection i'm going to come back up to the top here and i'm going to add another corrective layer of and this is a selection selected corrected area there and that again has added more of the color etc and, and whatever that i wanted there 
And I'm going to do the same to the, the arm here, just to hopefully fill this bit in there with the uh, with the color gradient as well. And I'm going to take the shadows up there. That's about right here. So again, soften the edge off with that uh, and add another correction layer in here, which, there you go. Now that's come out quite a lot more yellow. So I'm just going to remove the fill. Remove the fill actually, what I'm going to do is I'm use, using that mask again here, rather than removing the fill and just showing what was there previously, I'm going to go back down now to the hue and saturation level. I'm going to take the saturation out very slightly uh, there. So you've got the difference there between bright yellow and I think more of the skin tone there. Looking at the arm, Del is uh, doing all sorts of fantastic, wonderful stuff there. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go back to the frequency separation stuff here, zoom in on the arm, and I'm just going to take this just to brighten up the arm there. Not too much. Not too little. Okay, take some of the yellow tone there. Just to add a little bits in. Again, nice soft brush on this one gives you nice soft edges. Okay, so let's have a look at all of these. I'm going to group everything I've done at the moment uh, here so that we can just show you the switched off. That's the right back to the original and on there. Very subtle changes across the whole lot and very specifically localized changes. So we see we're changing on the arm here, the leg here, uh, and everything looks lovely. Right, uh, from there, I am gonna actually go back to my color gradient, uh, color map um, pro, and I am going to add a color map across the whole lot. Now there's, there's some, color maps I've added previous. I'm going to use a similar, actually, looking at the, the two, three tones here. I'm, I'm generally, if I'm doing this, I'm doing it on skin. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm actually just going to add the, that color grading across the whole palette, across the whole image here, and that tones everything in nicely. I'm going to just remove the fill just a little bit, just bring a bit of the gray back in. Uh, and from there, I'm also going to come into the eyes here and remove with a proper brush tool here we're on the uh, the the mask here uh, of the uh, of the, the gradient map uh, put a bit of black in there just to remove any skin tones from the whites of the eyes it's probably a little bit fussy and not something that you might notice, but we are being fussy. So that's what we're going to do uh, there. And that is that done. And there we are. So that is so far uh, what we've done to retouch. Uh, OK, so what I'm going to do, looking at the, uh, the image here, I am going to add something to the background because this is what I like to do. Uh, I'm opening. So what did I open previously? Uh, something else. Okay, right. I am going to go to my background stock and I'm going to add a texture to the background. Uh, this is what I like. So let's do that. I'm going to take that texture, open that up here. I'm going to select all, copy it, and going back to the tool there. Yeah, 
profile mismatch. I don't care. Right, I'm going to transform this layer to cover the whole lot. Uh, so let's rotate that to degrees. Let's bring that up here. Go. That's fairly nice. And you've got the darker area coming this side, which if you look at the original image, you've got the darker area on the opposite side. So what I'm trying to do is level out the, the, the kind of natural vignette with this as well. So we'll just do that and put it through to a soft light covering. Remove the fill of that very slightly to about here. Now, from here, we can do plenty of, uh, of, of bits and pieces. What I'm going to do uh, is on this particular one, I'm going to go back down to my background layer. I'm going to just really, this is real cheating, but it's, uh, I'm doing this because it's quick. Okay. So let's go. This is a useful tool, uh, Magic Wand tool. This is the, uh, this is the subject select tool. So let's just, draw a, a box around here uh, and it will then roughly select the, uh, the, the, the image. Switching back to the other magic wand tool, I'm going to just correct the bits that I want and don't want uh, there. There we go. This is lovely. I'm going to Add the mask in just to go around the hair here. What we don't want is hard edges coming through on the hair and everything else. Uh, this here doesn't need to be absolutely perfect in this particular case, I don't think, because we've got nice darker areas in there anyway. So <clears throat> there we are. And what we are doing here. Once that's all selected and done, we're going to go back up to our layer, invert the selection and add the layer mask. And you see that just removes any of the texture from, uh, from, the, from our model there. That's, uh, that's one technique I, I do because it's, uh, it's very quick. What I'll probably do in this particular case, looking at the gray of, uh, of the, uh, of the shades, I will probably using just I'll probably just brush out the mask and tone the shades in to the background. Uh, there we go. So yeah, just making it tone in as opposed to a stark grey which is a nice gray, but I'm going to just paint that out. So you've got the texture coming over the, that. All the texture is doing really in this case, because it's textured shades, is, uh, is using the, the, the tonality of the, uh, the textured layer uh, to, to do that. So that is that bit there. Nicely done. Okay, just give a bit of a crop here. I've got a... 10 by 8, where's my 10 by 8 crop? There it is, right. Kirsty uh, up in the frame. I'm going to come in at the side here. I might even actually just go for full frame crop on this one. Let's go 1DX up. Just so as we come in, like that, that puts Kirsty in the right place. Not overly worried about the end of the chaise. There we go. That is the crop there. So we're looking at the original image and we're looking at the corrected version of the image. That's fairly nice. I want to add maybe just a little darkening to the top and to the floor here. Uh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to add another layer and fill it with 100% black uh, here. Um, and then I'm going to take that down 
to a level that I would be happy with. Let's talk about uh, you know, where are we looking at about, about 22% at the moment. Right from there, I'm going to go to my elliptical marquee tool, and I'm going to just highlight just a small area there. Just select a small area here. I might even transform that selection just a little bit to just follow the line of Kirsty vaguely there. Okay, so with that selection transformed, invert that, and again, just mask off the black black layer. You see that's a really nice hard line there. And this is why originally my blur was up at 350. I think the 350 level here adds a really nice vignette to that and again from there i can now add and take it away to a level i'm happy with there so what we've done on this one 22 i think i quite like 22 22 is good uh and there we go so on this everything i've done correction wise pretty well has been in an adjustment layer um here And you can just switch that on and off as you go. I think we've moved from that to a beautiful image there. I'm going to save that roughly as my uh, as my my version of the edit. What have we got up here? I'm just looking around, being fussy now. I am going to just do a little more on the frequency separation layer. There was a highlight there okay that's that's lovely that's good fantastic okay now that little bit's gone from just over her eye there and there you have it i would suggest i might just pop the dress just for fun because because i can what's that what's going on with my we're here now. Uh, let's go. Uh, let's stop there. Let's go back to Magic One Selection Tool just to select the dress here. Just because what I want to do is pick up because it's a beautiful green dress, but we haven't really. It's, it's kind of dulled down a touch. So I'm going to just using another adjustment layer, very much selected on here. I'm just going to use the levels. I'm going to pick up the levels here just a touch, which you see it just brightening a little bit there. I think it just moved these down. There we go. And using again, just add that to selection. I'm going to give it a touch of saturation. Not too much, I think about there is lovely. Let's just give the whole image a bit of a lift. No, actually, there. Actually, I didn't do anything at all to that. So there is the image uh, original. Whoa something here i don't know what i did there i've probably yeah used a used a brush that i shouldn't have done somewhere on the background there uh and there we go that is my corrected image in my style um there you go lots of different bits and pieces That's it. That's what I feel is best. So that's mine. Let's see yours.